Hello and welcome to the Absolute Business Success Show with me, Carol Evans, your business consultant and coach. I've worked in business all my adult life and set up and run a number of my own businesses over the last 15 years. In this show, I'd like to share with you the tips and strategies that have helped me create success in my business and life as well as those in my clients. In this series, I'm going to be interviewing women who inspire and asking why she does what she does. If you want full inspiration, then why not hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out? And if you'd like even more information, then why not head over to my website at consultancyandcoaching.co.uk. Here you'll find lots of wonderful freebies that'll help you make the progress you desire. Now... Let's get started. Good morning and hello, Nolene, and welcome. And thank you so much for joining me and for offering us all a little bit of Monday motivation. Hi, Carol. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi. And so, Nolene, why don't you go ahead and just tell us who you are and what you're doing? Sure. Um, so first of all, thank you for having me, Carol. I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> um, so my name is Nolene and I'm an organic makeup artist, cruelty-free beauty ambassador and the founder of Natural Beauty Society. And what I do is I help you to simplify your beauty routine by choosing the right products to enhance your natural beauty and make you feel fullest confidence. Um, and I also help you to easily make the switch to natural, organic, cruelty-free beauty products without sacrificing quality and glamour. Um, and I do all of this through my one-on-one -on -one personalized lessons, my Natural Beauty Society members only community, uh, my online masterclasses and my blog. Well, no, Loon, you look absolutely fabulous yourself. So if, uh, if you deliver what you practice yourself, then that's uh, amazing results for people. But tell us a little bit about what your driving force was behind your decision to actually go into this. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for that lovely compliment, Carol. <laughs> um, but I guess that also kind of leads into my driving force behind what I do. And um, so for me, I guess it comes from a couple of perspectives. Um, first of all, there's a per personal perspective. So um, I actually used to work in the corporate world. Um, I used to work in the finance industry. And I was doing work that wasn't fulfilling. You know, I was just, it was just a job. I was going in every day, you know, counting down the hours till the end of the day, till the end of the week, till the next holiday and so on. You know how it is. Um, and I was just thinking, like, I want to do something that makes a difference in the world. I want to do something that, you know, I can like, leave a legacy behind, you know, as I say, make a difference in people's lives. And so that's the first reason why I do what I do. It's because I want to make people feel absolutely fabulous. Um, I'm, you know, I've been so sick of the mainstream beauty industry for such a long time. And um, it, it gives you, you know, it, like it's constantly telling you like you need to look a certain way, you know, and it's telling you to buy all these products all of the time and you don't even need them. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm like, no, like this doesn't have to be like this. You know, this is supposed to be something that's self-care and that's fun. And also, as I say, like to not make you feel like there's something wrong with you if you don't look a certain way. And also, I got so sick of those unrealistic looking like looks on Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, like seriously, like I'll be honest with you, like I don't mean to insult anybody, but like to me, that's not beauty. It's the opposite, like when people look like a completely different person. Um, but the other side of it for me as well is then the whole kind of like ethical side of things. Um, I'm hugely passionate about, um, you know, using only natural, organic, cruelty-free products. And um, for me, it's totally unacceptable that any animal should be harmed at all unnecessarily, let alone for the sake of a beauty product. And there is, again, going back to the mainstream beauty industry, there is so much of that going on still. I, it's unbelievable. And it's by some of the top biggest brands in the world. And um, the ones that people are calling the best brands. I mean, how can they be the best, you know, when they're testing on animals? And then there's all the ingredient side of things as well. So there's like so many people still aren't aware of the nasty ingredients that are in their products that they're putting on their self, themselves every single day and I feel like you know the food industry has come a long way in, in over the last maybe 10 20 years and we kind of are aware now of what um you know what kind of foods we should be eating you know we know about sugars and you know flavorings and all those kind of nasty things that you know we know not to put those in our bodies but unfortunately a lot of people still aren't aware 
that that's what's going on in their, you know, in their beauty products as well. And everything you put on your body is actually absorbed into your body. So it's actually going into your bloodstream, you know, or certainly 60 to 70% of it anyway, you know, so this is, these are kind of really my driving forces. These are like, I want to get the message out there about this, you know, and really just help people to, you know, not only like feel amazing, but also to use products that are actually like safe to use. Yeah, I think that's absolutely amazing. And on, on many levels, really, no lead. First of all, like the comment you made about being in the corporate world and the fact that you just realized life was passing you by, that hour after hour, the amount of hours people spend in their jobs and all they're doing is clock watching and waiting for the day to end. They go home for a couple of hours and then get up and do the same thing again. And it's just, you know, living life without purpose really isn't it there's so much satisfaction on the other side of it when you can find your purpose and you can do something that you're truly passionate about and it's great to see that you know you found something truly passionate for you and a real good mission and I think as a consumer of uh, beauty products myself you know that when I first read one of your uh, freebie downloads I remember taking a bag upstairs to my bathroom and just like emptying the cupboards you know like I and and then you know when I went shopping the next time looking for products that are cruelty free okay yes you can find those products that are cruelty free but then you know they might still have the toxins in they might still have parabens and and I think there's just so much confusion that people assume that if it's cruelty free that it's also natural and vice versa that if it's natural it's going to be cruelty free and of course it's not and then you go into your high street store and it's you know I dragged my husband with me one day and we we, we were there for ages he was just like mm. <laughs> I was trying you know like oh this is natural but it's uh, you know yeah, yeah. and it was such a hard job so it it is really great can you give us an example of, of a product that most of us wears and you know what nasty thing it might have in it in it yeah absolutely and I'm actually going to give you an example that's for everybody including men because I feel like people think when I talk about this it's just beauty products as in like okay your skincare products and your makeup products but actually it's cosmetics in general so this is literally things like even like your shower gels your toothpaste what you're washing your hands with all of these kind of things and men are also using those as well you know so this is why for me this is not just a women's issue it's an issue for everybody mm -hmm. I think about even like even if you don't wear makeup even as I go back to the example of men even men like you think about how many cosmetics they're putting on their body a day and then for women it's like three four five times that amount you know yeah. um but I just want to give you an example of one and as I say I'm going to use one that's for everybody and that would be something like shower gel or shampoo or your soap um, and what you'll find in, in a lot of the, um, you know, mainstream products out there is so, what are called sulfates, okay? So, you know, when you wash your hands or, you know, you use any kind of thing like that and it, like, you know, kind of lathers up, that's what's doing it. It's the sulfates that are doing that. But actually, sulfates are also found in things like carpet cleaner in your washing up liquid, you know? And um, it's even used, I've heard, to do something like, um, to something to do with engines, like to get the engine or the, the oil off engines. And I was thinking like, oh my God, yeah. like it's disgusting when you think about it. And, you know, people sometimes say to me, oh, but you're like, there's not that much of it though in there. And I say, that's absolutely true. Of course, like, because it has to be safe, you know, they have to be able to sell these, you know, they have to pass certain things. But it, that's, but the point of it is, is that you think about how often you're using those. Let's just even use soap. How many times a day do you wash your hands? You know, so you think about that, you're using that, what, six, seven times a day, let's say, right? Maybe even, let's say even a minimum three to four times a day, you might wash your hands. But most of us are going to wash our hands more often than that, you know? And then that's every single day over your entire life, you know? Yeah. So of course it's going to make a difference then, you know? And, and that's just one product. You think about, you add in all the other products as well, like the shampoos and the shower gels and any other kind of foaming things that you're using, even your, when you're washing your dishes, you know? like all of those things are, are going to add up and make a difference and it's going to have an impact on your health and your skin. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty horrific. And um, I don't know if you caught my interview last week with Natalie Moreau, but she's just set off uh, today or yesterday, um, you know, looking at plastics and the effect of them uh, from her scientific uh, voyage. And, you know, so I assume that the effect of these toxins in our makeup and beauty products and skincare products and just general soaps 
is, is going to have a similar effect to what they're finding, you know, from the tests they're doing on the plastics from the ocean. So, Absolutely. and sulfate is actually a really good example of that, um, Carol, because sulfates are, if you think about it, it's something that's gone down the drain. Okay, so it's been washed into our waterways and there it's having a, you know, those kind of ingredients are having a really bad effect on, you know, marine life, you know, and ultimately that also comes into the food chain at some point, you know, yeah. so it's really like it, it, they're so bad on so many levels. So like those kind of ingredients, they're not only bad for you, your skin, they're also bad for your health. Yeah. And then most likely most of those products are probably tested on animals anyway from a lot of those kind of brands. So, yeah. you know, it's really not doing good for, for any of us. Oh, I love what you're doing, Nolene, and, uh, you know, I really hope alongside kind of the findings that Natalie's going to, uh, and, and her ex expedition is going to uh, create, I hope that, you know, you get a lot of awareness for what you're saying as well, and that, you know, something can start to make real significant changes because i do feel sorry for us as general public you know that the shops are just full of uh, products that generally tend to be cheaper but just even more uh serious i suppose is how easy they are to access and uh, as we've just talked about you know the the right products that the ones that we want to buy with a clear conscience are so difficult to kind of access really aren't they it really is and if i could just uh, and we could talk about this topic all day and we know <laughs> loads of other things talking. but just one thing i did want to mention on that what you said there carol is that it's not actually just the cheap products it's actually the expensive products as well. So I'll give you right. an example of that is um, there's a brand, very well-known brand, and um, it's supposed to be the top, one of the top brands out there. Like their lip balm is 65 euros. And when I looked at the ingredients that were in there, it was full of cheap crap. Like for 65 euros for a lip balm, I want this thing to like transform my lips almost. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm expecting only the best things in there for 65 euros. And as I said, when I look at it, it was full of cheap fillers. It was full of silicones. Again, silicones are really bad for you as well. And, um, you know, after a while, they're just going to end up drying out your lips or drying because they can't penetrate the skin. So any kind of silicones or things like mineral oils, anything like that going on your, your skin isn't going to penetrate it at all. And there's technically, they're supposed to be there to like, keep in moisture but they can't because they can't get to the under layers of the skin and again these are often like um petroleum based um ingredients you know so you think about like vaseline it's actually petroleum jelly you know it says it on the tin literally yeah. <laughs> you know and again that's obviously bad for the environment and it's bad for you too and it's not doing the thing that you want it to do and um, so yeah i agree with you it is very difficult as a consumer i mean it's been like i've been doing this for 10 years you know, and I'm yeah. still learning, you know, so I do understand how hard it is for, for consumers. And that's what I'm trying to do is to help with this and to make it, mm -hmm. easy, you know, and simplify it and, you know, help you to know that, right, when I go to the store, what I'm buying is actually what I think it is, you know, and you can have a, you know, a, like, you know, peace of mind that what you're buying, as I say, you, you feel like you're making a difference in the world as well, you know? Yeah, well, I think we all need you in our pockets when we're shopping. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to do that. <laughs> it's really, it, it's, it's great to see, you know, that you're absolutely full of purpose with this, but there must have been a lot of challenges along the way for you. So do you want to talk us through some of those that you've had to, had to deal with? Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, from a business perspective, there's the obvious ones, like the self-doubt and all those kind of things. Um, and, you know, really having to push myself out of my comfort zone a lot. And, um, you know, I wouldn't consider myself the shyest person, but I still have to push myself to be visible and you know, really kind of keeping that why in mind that really has to, you know, that pushes me to actually go, okay, no, I need to talk about this. I need to get this out there. Um, but for me, I would say probably, yeah, the challenges like are around even just the mainstream beauty industry in general, like pe other people in my industry, you know, other like makeup artists. And it's really hard sometimes to, um, I wouldn't even say try to convince people, but just even to be heard about this, like, because mm -hmm. the mainstream beauty industry, it's like, there's this big cartel there. I mean, there are so many makeup brands and skincare brands out there but actually a lot of them are owned by just about six or seven companies you know and so like the likes of l'oreal for example they own lancome and they own a ton of other um brands out there like urban decay and everything you know and people don't realize that as well um, and because they have this cartel it is very very hard sometimes to change that way of thinking because people think oh well sure l'oreal have been around for years estee lauder around for years max sure they must be good and you're thinking, you have to try and teach people actually, no, they're not. Just because they've been around for years doesn't mean they're good. And then when I, 
you know, have to try and explain to people why they're not good. And I think one of the biggest challenges I've found with this is that, um, like I say, like people are thinking, oh, well, sure, like if I change to natural and organic, like I'm using my MAC products or whatever, they're the top quality. You know, and if I do, if I change to natural organic, should they just, they're not going to be good quality anyway. They're going to be boring. And I'm like, no, actually a few years ago, maybe that was the case, but it's not like that anymore. So it's really trying to, the challenging that I guess is trying to change that mainstream way of thinking. It's about getting to people to think of, you know, think of buying in a different way as well, you know, and really just also trying to educate people to educate themselves, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? That it don't just take everything at face value. Like, you know ask questions you know don't just say oh it says this on the tin okay that's fine i'm gonna buy it you know or oh it's from mac or oh it's from l'oreal i'm gonna buy it they're good you know ask questions of the brands as well and these are the kind of things that is as i say a bit of a challenge sometimes but definitely sure. worth it <laughs> yeah no i can appreciate that and i think also the celebrity endorsement on a lot of these brands as well kind of exacerbates the problem because people first of all people believe that these people are actually using the product which yeah. you know, all know that they might have done once <laughs> to, so that they can justify the fact that they're not lying by making that statement but of course they don't but of course people follow what celebrities do and they so do. of course that will make your challenge much harder but was and there ever a time uh, Nolene that along the way that you ever felt like giving it all up oh yeah so many times <laughs> that's, a, that's a constant ongoing thing I think that maybe goes back to the self-doubt bit as well as anything else but yeah absolutely but you know I think Carol that's kind of normal when you're doing something new you know and um, so like and obviously having a business is something new you know it's like you go from being in a job being told what to do all the time you know to something where First of all, you have to think for yourself. Everything is, you're doing everything. You have to think for yourself, which is great, but that can also be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. So that can make you feel like giving up. It's not like you're just learning one new thing at a time. You're learning like 20 new things at a time, you know? Um, mm. And the other thing as well, as I already mentioned, is about going out your comfort zone. Like that's a constant challenge, you know? And it, it does, like there are days where you just go, oh, I just want to hide, as I said, you know? You just, you're just go, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard, you know? But yeah, you just have to keep going. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more rewarding though, is there, that when you do step out of your comfort zone and it just feels absolutely amazing, doesn't it? A hundred percent. Because I think it's like anything in life, as I say, like, you know, it's that fear of the unknown, isn't it? And then once you actually do it, you're thinking, oh, that wasn't as scary as I thought it was. Yeah. Where wasn't I doing that all along? And then I think that, you know, like, what's that expression? Um, the antidote to fear is action you know, and when you take action, you know, even a little bit, as I say, that gives you a little bit more confidence to take the next step and the next step. And before you know it, you've done like so many, taken so many big steps, you know, that you really start to build that confidence. Yeah. So Nolene, tell us about what you wanted to do when you were a little girl. What did you dream of doing? Um, so it's funny, actually, because one of the things I did want to be at one point was a hairdresser. Um, but something else I wanted to be at one point was also a policewoman have zero idea why <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe I saw something on the TV or something I don't know <laughs> um, another thing that I did want to do as well was to be a teacher so you know I think as a kid you go through all these phases mm. um, but a couple of things that also came to mind were um, like I always wanted to travel so that was a big big thing for me as a child I always wanted to go and explore the world um, but something else that I do remember, now I wouldn't say when I was, I, I don't know what age with this was to be honest, but it's definitely something very strong in my mind, um, is that I remember seeing like all the grown-ups around me, so like my parents, you know, aunts, uncles, their friends, and you know, I'd always see them complaining about their jobs, or you know, they were just so drained, you know, from, mm. I don't know, doing work maybe they didn't want to do, or just doing, as you were saying, like just getting through the day type of thing, and I remember seeing that, you know, or they, I'd hear them say something about, oh, my boss said this, and now I have to do that type of thing. And I remember thinking, I don't want that. Like, I, I don't want someone to tell me what to do for the rest of my life. Like, I want to do things yeah. on my own terms. So, and it was something that I forgot about for such a long time. And it was only when I started my business, I was thinking, oh my God, and that just came back to me. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. oh, so I've actually already always had that there. It just kind of, I guess, when I started to go into that corporate world, that kind of got, you know, Maybe not, obviously not beaten out of me, but you know what I mean? It's certainly like yeah. it wasn't encouraged. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's really interesting though, because kind of like your dreams of being a hairdresser and your dreams of being a teacher, obviously they are linked into what you're doing now because you, oh, obviously a hairdresser makes people look good, you make people look good, but you're also educating and, and teaching them how they can create these looks uh, themselves and where to get the products. 
But um, so, Nolene, you know, we talked about kind of like the difference of your uh, corporate world and setting up your own business. What does being the boss actually mean to you? What does it give you? Well, it gives me freedom, you know, and um, it gives me freedom of time. Um, I can be location independent, you know, like I'd also say it even gives me freedom of thought because, mm -hmm. you know, you know what it's like when you're in a job. It's like you're almost like you're in this box and this is what you have to do. And, you know, it's like, don't you dare take your own initiative, you know, yeah. and it's like someone else telling you what to do, you know, and um, whereas like, as I say, like I have my, I can choose my own thoughts here. Like I, if I have a thought about something, I go, do you know what? I want to try that. I can do it. You know, I can do things on my terms, you know, and it might fail. Maybe it won't work, but at least I can give it a try. Do you know what I mean? And um, like, I can be more creative, you know, and, and, yeah. and I've noticed as well that since working for myself, my, my creativity has come back. You know, I was always so creative as a kid. I was always like doing something creative, like drawing, coloring in you know, anything like that. But like I, for so long, I st stepped away from all of that, you know, because there wasn't the, obviously when I was, what I was doing wasn't creative, you know, it was just like ugh, same thing every day, you know? So that's another really great thing that's come back, as I say, as a result of working for myself. Yeah, I know that's really great. And obviously you're in a creative industry as well in terms of making people look, helping people to look great. Um, but uh, yeah, so what would be your top tips for people who are already in business, but they're kind of like facing one of those many challenges and thinking, oh, I've got to give it all up. Oh, well, first of all, don't, don't give up. Okay. <laughs> I know it's hard and I've been there. I'm, I'll probably be better there again, maybe in a couple of days time. <laughs> please don't give up. I know it's scary and it's blooming hard sometimes, but my biggest piece of advice would to be is to keep your why in mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep that bigger picture in mind. Like think about like, why did you start in the first place? You know, like what is it that you want to achieve? You know, what's the difference you want to make in the world? What's the legacy you want to leave? You know, and um, like the most successful people are the ones who don't give up. They hang in there. You know, it's not that like we always kind of think of successful people as like, oh, they're the most talented or the smartest or anything. It's actually not. Like if you look at most people who are successful, they're the ones who actually just work. They said, no, I'm, I'm going to just hang in there. You know, there's so many smart people out there who gave up. You know, yeah. there's so many like super talented people out there that gave up too. You know, yeah. so that's why it just, it's nothing to do with that. And there's a really lovely quote, um, and I'm probably going to not say the quote correctly here, but it's something like um, entrepreneurs spend a few years of their life um, doing what most people won't so they can spend the rest of their lives like most people can't. Yeah. And that's something that really helps me as well when I think about like the days when I want to give up. As I say, so for me, it's like thinking about your why. That is the number one thing to think about. And that will make you, you know, pretty quickly go, okay, no, I'm not giving up. No, I'm not going back to that old way or no, my, my mission is too big. And, yeah. you know, and as I say, like, and think about those successful peoples as well. And think about like, yeah, it, it might take longer than you think to get there. But as you said earlier, Carol, it's so worth it. You know, yeah. as it may take you five years or 10 years, but like, isn't that worth it for the rest of your life? You Absolutely. So, uh, Nolene, uh, I think you probably answered th this question mm -hmm. with the, the last question, but have you got any additional tips for people who might still be in there nine to five and watching the hours click by and thinking, you know, could they actually leave that behind and step into their own business? Well, I would 100% say go for it. Like if you have an inkling at all that you would like to you know, like set up your own business. If you have an idea, like run with it, do it, you know, try things, test things, tweak things, you know, you don't have to have everything figured out right away. You learn as you go along, you know? And, and the other thing I'd say to that is like, there's no right time to start. Like the only right time is now, right this minute. Yeah. Like, don't wait for the perfect time because it doesn't exist. You yeah, know, like I did that too, like for so long, I was thinking, oh, when, when I have more money or when I, I've learned more about this thing. And eventually I got to a stage where it was like, I just ended up quitting my job. Like it was like, I cannot literally take any more of this. Now, I don't necessarily recommend everybody does that, but that was what I needed to do. You know, that was what was right for me. Um, maybe if you, you know, for other people, it might be okay, well, maybe get a part-time job or just do even part-time hours in the job you're in now and work your business on the side. But whatever way works for you, I would say do it because there is never going to be a right time. All you're doing is just actually wasting time, you know, that yeah. you're never going to get back and just go for it. As I say, you're going to learn along the way anyway. Yeah. And life is about living today, isn't it? Nothing's promised to us about tomorrow. Absolutely. I so agree. Like tomorrow never comes, you know? Yeah.
Um, yeah. And the other sorry, piece, I'd just like to, a piece of advice I'd like to give there as well is that I'd also recommend getting some help, you know, um, and investing in yourself. Like, for example, it could be like a business coach or a mastermind or, you know, it could be a course or a membership, but just do something to help you, you know, to, to be around like-minded people who, who get it, you know, um, like you're going to be making changes, obviously, like in your career, but you're going to be making changes personally as well. Like, as I said earlier, this is a, a personal development journey as well. And you're going to find that like not everybody like from your old, I don't want to say your old life, but like your basically your friends and family won't always get it. So it's really important to be around people who will help to support you. It's not saying they won't support you, but it's just, it's different, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's why I say get some help in some way, invest in a course or a, a business coach or whatever, and be around those kind of people as well who do get what you're doing and will give you, who'll be there to big you up on the days when you do feel like giving up as well. Yeah, sure. No, I totally agree with that. And even though I'm a business consultant and coach myself, and I've worked in business all my life, uh, and had a number of different businesses, my business still took off incredibly after I actually got my own coach and got my own support. I've seen massive uh, improvements and, and uh, changes and development. That I just wouldn't have probably done because somebody from the outside can just look at you and your situation so much more clearly than you can when you're on the inside. Exactly, 100% agree with that. Yeah, like coaches still need coaches, you know. Coaches Mentors need coaches, yes. Mentors. Everybody needs a coach. <laughs> well, not everybody needs a coach, but mm -hmm. if you want to make uh, progress and you want to mm -hmm. have a fulfilling and satisfying life and a successful life on your terms, mm -hmm. then it certainly does benefit you. So, Nolene, what's next yeah. for you then? So, for me, um, I'm opening up the doors again in a few weeks to my Natural Beauty Society membership. So that's my uh, one-stop shop for all things natural, organic, cruelty-free beauty. Um, it's a place where you also get like monthly masterclasses on beauty tips and techniques. Um, it's a place to come for, you know, we, we're very, self-care is a big topic for us there as well. Um, and just to get some kind of like inspiration and just, you know, feel good. And we have a lovely community in there already. And I'm super excited to open up the doors again in a few weeks. So that, sound, that sounds fabulous. It sounds a fabulous membership. And you also said right at the start about the fact that you offer one-to-one -one, uh, sessions with people. So where can people find out more about you? Sure. Um, so you can come over to my website. It's at www.nolenesliniemakeup.com. Um, I'm also over on Pinterest as well. So if you're over there, come and find me there. I have plenty of tips and tricks over there too. Um, on my website, I also have plenty of free beauty guides as well. So I have like a cruelty-free beauty guide um, to help get you started. Um, I also have a um, healthy beauty guide. So it's really kind of to help you get started with natural and organic beauty. Um, I also have another guide there with a list of natural and organic makeup brands because I feel like that's a topic that people when they start making the switch they're thinking okay well which brands are the good brands here so that was um that's a free resource that i have there as well but as i said i also have um my one-to-one -one sessions there too so that's if you want something you know a bit more kind of personalized and um, i do one-to-one -one sessions as well perfect well if you want uh, to follow uh nolene then go and visit her website nolene slimy slimy makeup.com and uh download I highly recommend her freebies but as I say go that uh, go to your bathroom cabinet with a plastic bag <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you so much Nolene for joining me this morning and for such interesting um, conversation and hints and tips which I'm sure everybody will uh, benefit from and thank you to everybody for listening in this morning thank you so much Carol for having me it's been an absolute pleasure Thank you, Nolene. Have a great day. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this episode, which I sincerely hope you found both beneficial and enjoyable. Now, don't forget to head over to my website at consultancyandcoaching.co.uk and download the freebies there. Stay tuned for the next episode. Now go out there and create great success.